Hello, this is George, and this video is on my newly delivered Agema SD130 Super Doublet Apochromatic Refracting Telescope. Uh, there's surprisingly little information on YouTube about this, and that's why I thought I'd put this on uh, prior to the next run, in case anybody's interested in uh, getting on the list. Uh, this will give you some idea uh, of what the telescope actually is, at least, at least the uh, SD-130 here. And I'm going to talk briefly about uh, my use of the scope with uh, bino viewers, uh, which uh, is important because when I ordered this, I had Edward uh, reduce the tube length by 25 millimeters. And that may be adequate for most bino viewers, but if you use uh, a mirror-based bino viewer like the one that Dennis uh, has produced uh, using the Zeiss uh, mirrored uh, bino viewer, you may want to add another five millimeter reduction, uh, bringing it to 30 millimeter reduction uh, for optimum uh, use with the bino viewer. In short, I'm just astounded by the attention to detail and the quality that went into this scope and my initial impressions are that it meets all the advertising and my expectations. Uh, in fact, it actually exceeds my expectations and I've owned uh, quite a few high-end apochromatic refractors and many other telescopes. Uh, I'll just give you a quick tour here. Uh, really the <laughs> the entire instrument is flawless. Uh, the paint, the graphics, the optics, everything is just perfect. Uh, the, the lens cover here comes off easily and the, I don't know if you can see the, there we go, the objective, but it's a thing of beauty and uh, the views through it again are spectacular. Uh, it came extremely well packed. This little knob was uh, not on, uh, I assume for protection during shipping, and it uh, just requires uh, th three small bolts to attach. The one thing that I did do is I added the the plate up here for the tail rad and a, a little longer uh, dovetail plate below. The one that came with the Agema was perfectly fine, but I'm used to using tail rads, and uh, this is the original, uh, the way the original plates were ins uh, installed, but uh, I just find it easier to use a tail rad mounted in the middle of the optical tube. And this is probably just old habit. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this exquisitely made uh, finder, but I just feel more comfortable and it's easier for me to find objects uh, looking at a zero power uh, tail rad. Uh, this is easily adjusted, it works very well, and I'm leaving it on because as most of you tell red owners know, uh, if you show up at a star party and your batteries are dead and nobody has any double A's, uh, you're out of luck unless you have a backup. So uh, this is going to be left on. Uh, I have it mounted on the uh, Track the Stars Panther uh, TTS-160, uh, which I also like uh, very much. I have it set up in a side yard here. Uh, because my house is undergoing major construction and my permanent pier is uh, right in the middle of uh, the construction site, so I'm off on the side. This is a uh, little close-up of the uh, tag. I have uh, serial number 006. 
and again when I say flawless I mean there's not one little ripple in the paint uh, no scratches in the anodizing it's just a superbly executed design and I feel really honored to be able to have this telescope and this one's gonna be with me forever <laughs> and uh, this will give me an opportunity here to talk about the bino viewers. This one here is uh, Dennis's uh, conversion of a Zeiss, and I have it hooked up to a mirrored diagonal from Botter Planetarium. Now, I found with my Mark V and the prism diagonal that it would reach focus in all my eyepieces without the glass path corrector. But with a prism-based bino viewer, you really should have that GPC installed. So when I put the Zeiss mirrored bino viewer on, which has a longer light path, most of my eyepieces would come to focus, but not the, uh, the Nikon. Actually, it was right on the cusp. I probably had one millimeter to spare where it did come into focus, but that's right at the very end, so um, I had to put a GPC into the mirror diagonal in order to get all of the eyepieces to come to focus. And I'm sure I'll be spending hours resolving some of the uh, extension tubes and additional uh, barlows or power mates that I'll be adding to this, but uh, I'm nearly a 100% bino viewer, so this is what I'm going to have to deal with. and. I think if anybody's just using monocular vision, just get it as Edward has designed it and don't worry about anything. But if you use bino viewers, uh, aside from the Orion and maybe a couple others, uh, you're going to need to address the, the in focus on the, on the refractor. And as I said, if you're going to use uh, Dennis's Zeiss converted bino viewer, you're probably going to want the tube shortened by 30 millimeters. Uh, but if you decide on 25, it, it should be close or adequate for most eyepieces, but perhaps not all. Um, this is a, a view of my eyepiece case. And again, you can see the short light path of the the prism based diagonal as opposed to the mirror based but again I just wanted to make sure that I address those couple of issues uh, in case anyone's contemplating ordering one of these uh, dealing with Lana and Edward was effortless uh, it took a little longer than expected. It was about two years for me from the time I sent in the deposit until I received the scope. But uh, Edward had to work out some uh, tools for speeding up the process of spherizing the objective. But it was well worth the wait. I suspect that subsequent orders will take much less time uh, and again my number uh, serial number on this scope is 006 so you know not many had been out and I guess it was still a learning process on how to do everything efficiently that was still up to his standards which I assure you is second to none he is a true craftsman uh, I really, as I said, I feel very fortunate to have uh, this scope. Uh, even though the conditions here haven't been great the last few nights, uh, 
I was able to look at Saturn, uh, was able to easily see Cassini under low power, uh, detail on the cloud tops of Saturn, uh, stars or little pinpoints, the star test was perfect. I have nothing bad to say about this scope and <laughs> I'm sure that anybody else contemplating ordering one will have the same experience. Uh, they make a 120 millimeter, a 130, a 150 and I believe they're taking orders for a 180. Uh, after the, uh, the house is finished being constructed if I can find a way to get an observatory built I may go in on the uh, 180 for a permanent mount in the observatory. So anyhow, I hope uh, this video has provided you with a little better insight into what an Agema telescope looks like and performs like. I'll be writing a review uh, on cloudy nights once I get multiple hours of observing over many days in, but I want to make sure that I look at uh, a variety of objects through different bino viewers, different eyepieces, and uh, different uh, atmospheric conditions before I uh, write up a detailed view. But this is the best telescope I've ever looked through, and I've owned, and I'm not putting down any other telescope that I've owned. They've all been, the high-end ones, uh, have all been excellent. But this, there's just something different about looking through this uh, super doublet. Thanks very much for listening, and please post any comments or questions that you might have.